welcome everybody. My main goal today is that I'm here for you and that we have a lot to cover. So I'm just giving you some highlights of the changes that have come up. But if there's something you want to know, something you don't agree with, please just speak up, jump in, interrupt me at any point. The slides are here as a backdrop. So if you wanted to have any other discussions or address a quick topic related to these guidances, please let me know. So my background has been in the industry for well over 25 years now, and just started as a research coordinator. I've worked across the CROs, sponsors, sites. I've done quite a bit of global project management, global directory, global audits. So I'll try to share things from a best practice perspective. And our objectives for today, to introduce the rationale, revisions, and release to E6R3. And this is not final, so I will share the latest information that I have seen and as of just last week, double-checking things. I provided a number of reference documents for you. Some of them, it's just this one, again, it was published in October 2021, and it's just a general consideration, so you can read it at your leisure. And just talking about, you know, why they're doing this, what the goal is to find quality into studies. The concept we'll talk about today is just the recognition, especially going into COVID and as we lived through COVID and the, the uh, still living through it, but through the, just the initiation of it and those initial clinical trials, the concept that trials are not one size fits all. And so this was already being considered as these guidances were being drafted in 2019. But again, just a lot of thought going into how can we do studies a little bit differently, a little bit better, a little bit cleaner. So looking at our different choices in terms of how we design them. And then talking about the different aspects for reporting, designing, and safety management. So again, I'll let you read this at your leisure, but we'll touch on some of the highlights. One of the things we'll be focusing on in this document is just the concept of the approach to our thinking and the fact that they're looking at adjusting the principles, those core principles that we derive for the foundation of all clinical trials. We'll talk about that for a little bit in terms of what are some of the changes that we are seeing. And in case you're in doubt, here are those core principles. We'll talk about them a little bit more. But these are from the ICHGCP E6, the revision two. So we'll just review those quickly as well. Then I've also provided you just with an explanatory note. Again, just why are all these changes coming about? What is the rationale? What is the purpose? And then you also have this document here as well. And this one's just a really nice summary in terms of the approach. I just like the visuals in it, the fact that, again, we will touch on this. But the release of these documents is broken down, being broken down into sections. So we'll talk a little about Annex 1. Annex 2, and just where we're going with that. And the other thing we'll talk about as well are the timelines. There we go. We'll talk about the timelines as well, because one of the most important things is what are we talking about, why are we here, how do we do it, and when are we responsible for this? So you do have this document as well. This is the work plan as of early this year. So this, again, is another reference for you to have and to look at. And just these future anticipated milestones. You can see that this was the initial goal, and it's being expanded in terms of when do we actually expect deliverables. So we're expecting updates for Annex 2. We'll talk about what that is. But you can see, again, that these are things that are still coming. So as far as ICH GCP E6, Revision 3, it is still a work in progress. So again, you have this for reference in terms of what are the expectations for adoption and sign-off in terms of when this is, so to speak, formalized. So we'll talk about the changes to principles as mentioned. Again, we'll talk about what are the current principles and how are they now changing. We'll introduce the rationale, revisions, and release of E8. What is that all about? We're going to talk a little bit, I only have you for 90 minutes, but just a little bit about CTQ critical to quality, not a new concept, not a new phrase, but something that isn't going away. This phrase is repeated over and over and over again 
in revision to E6, as well as this new ICH E8 document. The concept of let's be smarter up front, instead of working harder after the fact to try to correct things. So really identifying what is absolutely critical to this particular study. So moving away again from the concept of one size fits all in our study design. We've known that that's not true, but we have a tendency to use a lot of boilerplate language. We throw in a lot of um, secondary endpoints. We have a lot of data values that would be nice to know. But how do we really consolidate our studies down to what is absolutely most critical for decision making? What is absolutely most critical for safety? Most critical. And we'll demonstrate that ICH E8 provides cross-referencing to other relevant ICH guidelines. And it's nice. They give us a little table that actually summarizes how we use ICH GCP guidances together, depending on what topic it is we're focused on. So if we're looking at statistical planning, which documents go together, safety, which documents go together. So it's a nice tool in that regard as well. 